Hi, I'm Sandy Peterson, co-designer of Dungeon Boss the board game, and we're going to learn how to play Dungeon Boss. First off, a game of Dungeon Boss lasts exactly five turns. You get your turn track, you put the Epic Boss on track one. Each turn, he'll move down the track a step. If he gets to, if he gets to number five and you haven't beat him yet, you lose. So you gotta beat him in those five turns. Now, to set up, uh, set up is a little longer than some of our other games. You have to get the eight enemy decks, you have to get your loot decks, you have to get your eight dungeon card decks. Now, when I say it takes a little longer than some of our other games, I mean it takes maybe three minutes instead of two minutes, so it's not very quick, not, not very slow. You choose your epic boss if you have more than one, and you put him on turn one. Then each player picks his hero. Now, you can do this randomly by shuffling through your giant pile of hero cards and picking and going stud, you know, picking the cool one. Or, you can just choose your favorite. Now, if there's a dispute as to which hero you want to play, the game's owner gets to settle the dispute. Because with great power comes a great responsibility. Place your hero's figure, his hero sheet, his ability cards, uh, take some energy, set his health marker, and you're all there. There's your hero, you're, you're good to go. Also, everyone gets a health potion. Uh, at the start of the game. Uh, if you want a bigger challenge, then you can start without the health potion. That's in the rules, now you know. Now, once everything's set up, like I said, three, four minutes set up tops, then we're ready to do the game, and there's five turns, and each turn sequence is exactly the same. Now, Dungeon Boss has from two to five players. You can play it solo by picking two or three characters to control for yourself, or really, if you're playing with two people, each person can pick two heroes, but you can, and then have four, but you can also pick just two heroes. It's up to you. It depends on how much extra stuff you want to deal with. Uh, now, the first thing you do on the turn sequence is choose which dungeon you're gonna go in for this turn. Now, the dungeons are rated from one to seven, and then there's the epic boss, which is kind of an eighth level. You probably wanna pick a first level dungeon for your first uh, attempt, and then you wanna go up. You don't wanna go up one, two, three, four, five through the turns because you won't get to eight every, you have to, you're gonna have to skip some levels on the way up and kind of feel for yourself which levels you're able to handle. So. You start with a level one dungeon, maybe a level two if you're feeling especially experienced. The players can discuss together how to do this. Then everyone sets their heroes up. You start with four energy and full health. That's it, you're good to go. Uh, next, you inflict the menace. Every dungeon, as you can see in this image, has a specific menace. And so some dungeons the menace is two players each take a damage. Some player dungeons it's everyone gets the affliction debuff. Some dun it's just different every dungeon. So every dungeon's menace, especially designed, you do the menace. Everyone suffers the menace. Then you can see on the dungeon card it's got the boss right there on it. You then draw his minions. Uh, some dungeons have uh, beast minions. Some have undead. Uh, this dungeon that we're looking at here has two beast minions. Higher level dungeons add champions. Uh, the bosses usually have only champions. And uh, some dungeons make their own special minions for themselves while you're fighting them. But you draw the minions and you lay them out next to the boss. That's who you're gonna fight. Now comes one of the most strategic moments of the game. Assign heroes. Each hero takes himself and puts himself his figure in front of one of the enemies. Now, if there's more heroes, then you have enemies, then the extra heroes don't have to face an enemy. They go off to one side, they can't be hit. Or they can be hit, but it's harder to do. If you have more enemies than you have heroes, you're going to have to double up some of the enemies and pick who gets what. Now, you can't just double up willy-nilly. Every hero has to have an enemy before anyone can have a second enemy. If you have a really small number of heroes or a lot of enemies, then every hero has to have two enemies before anyone can have a third, and so forth. So you pick out your enemies, you assign them to the heroes, and then we go into the battle sequence. First, we roll the enemy tactics die. It's tactics die is gonna have a green, a red, or a blue result. That tells you what tactics the enemy use. Now there's some, some enemies that don't apply tactics, but most of them do. I suppose if you had a group of enemies, none of which had tactics, you wouldn't have to roll a tactics die, but usually you wanna do it. Once you've rolled the tactics die, then it's time for the heroes to attack. 
Every hero is going to roll his attack dice. At the start of the game, everyone has two attack dice. Later in the game, when some people have ascended, those players will get three attack dice. And of course, you can use abilities to get more dice and so forth. But you roll your attack dice, and there's four different results you can get on your attack dice. You can get an energy. If you get an energy, you don't damage the enemy at all, but you get to get an energy token and put it on your sheet. So that's always good. Then there are the, uh, uh, the slow hits. A slow hit is, uh, is avoided by the enemy if they have a dodge. Like say you roll two slow hits and they have one dodge. That means instead of doing two damage, you'll do one damage because two minus one is one. If you roll two slow hits and they had two dodges, you'd do no damage. Of course, if you roll two slow hits and they had no dodges, you just hit them, so that's cool. Another result you can get is the fast hit. Well, a fast hit is a quick rapier-like jab, and that's avoided by having armor, which armor won't avoid a slow hit, but it'll stop a fast hit. And it works just exactly the same as the slow hits, except armor stops the, slow, the fast hits, and dodging stops the slow hits. It's like that. You have two different kinds of armor, two different kinds of hits. Well, there's a third kind of hit, which is really cool when you get it. It's only one of the six chances. That's the critical hit. A critical hit does two damage always, and ignores every bit of armor the enemy has, because there's no point in getting a critical hit that misses. I mean, that's just dumb, right? So the critical hits are really good. Now, after you roll your dice, you then decide if you're going to use abilities. Abilities cost energy. They can cost two to four energy. You just spend the energy and then apply that, take that ability card and apply it. You have an ability card for each ability you have. Uh, often the abilities are like, uh, you kind of like retrofit them. So you say, for you might have an ability that says, if you crit an enemy, do an extra crit. So you roll the dice, say, I'm using this ability. Look, I got a crit. Now I have two crits. Uh, after you've used your abilities, then you apply your damage to any enemies you want. You are assigned to a specific enemy that you're fighting, but you don't have to attack that enemy. You can attack any of them. So everyone can pile up on one enemy and kill them, and that's pretty common. Or you can use abilities to scatter among the different enemies, whatever you want to do. So you add up your abilities, you do your damage, you're looking at your rice, you say, oh, I got a whole bunch of fast hits. Why well, don't want to hit that guy? He has armor. That'll stop my fast hit. I want to get this guy here who's slow and, and, and stab him, or whatever you're going to do, you know? So that's how the uh, that works. When you finish applying all your damage, then it's time for the enemies to strike back. Now, if you look at this enemy card, you will see that the enemy has several different levels of things they do. They have a regular attack. They have a, they often have tactics, which, which match up to what the tactics die was you rolled. And they may have special abilities. They may have armor, things that are always in effect. All right. So what you do is the easiest way to handle this is go through the enemies from left to right or right to left, whatever you want to do, and go one enemy at a time until they're all done. Now, the enemies do attack the person right in front of them. That's why it's important to pick which one you're in front of. Not because you're forced to attack that guy, but because he's forced to attack you. So for example, if you have one of the heroes has a good dodge, you don't want to put him in front of a guy that has a fast attack because that's going to ignore your dodge. You want to put him in front of the guy with the slow attacks, right? Uh, if you have an enemy that does crits, well, you're just going to have to suck it up because it's going to avoid any armor you have. So you put the enemies in front of you. If the enemies do the damage one at a time. First, the enemies will do the regular attack. And then that enemy will pick which... will look at the tactics, and if it, got, if it has a tactic for that roll, it'll inflict that effect. So, for example, if you roll the blue tactical result, and this enemy only has a green and a red, it won't do anything. But if you roll a green or red next turn, it will. So that's how the tactics die work. All the enemies will do their tactics. Sometimes enemies will inflict debuffs on you, or they'll buff their allies, and then you get a special debuff card or a buff card, and you put it on the enemy along with timers. That shows the enemy has an ongoing effect. After the enemies strike, then everyone removes timer tokens from their buffs and debuffs. There's only ever two timer tokens or one or zero, right? So it's not hard to keep track of you. Just like everyone take off a timer token from one of their things. If you get to take off the second timer token, it's gone. Everything lasts two turns. Very straightforward. Okay. After the enemies attack, and after you've attacked, you've checked to see are there any enemies left. If they're all dead, you win. If they're not all dead, you go to the net round two. You roll the, uh, the enemy tactics die again. Heroes attack and use abilities. Enemies attack. Remove timers, and and you go cycle through it. You don't you you don't uh, reassemble who your enemy heroes are fighting. Now, if a hero is killed, 
you do have to reassemble or retarget the enemies that fought that hero. Every enemy has to have a hero all the time, but the heroes don't always have to have an enemy. Uh, eventually, you'll reach the point where all the heroes are dead, or you run away, or you have killed uh, all the enemies. At this point, the battle ends. Hopefully, you've killed all the enemies, and then you get loot. Every dungeon has a certain number of loot cards you get, and that's basically equal to the dungeon's level. So if you beat a level five dungeon, there's five loot cards per player. So you take your loot cards, you go through it, and you get your stuff. You can get runes that are a permanent boost to your hero. You can get evos. Evos are really awesome because when you get 15 evos, you cash them in and your hero becomes ascended. This gives them a new ability card that you can use and a new trait. And traits are cooler than abilities in a sense because you don't pay energy for traits. They just always happen. So for example, you might have a trait which is uh, all of your, you ignore dodges. Your fast hits always hit the guy. That's a great trait. There's characters that have it. Uh, you advance your character, you get your runes, you get your uh, your ascensions, you can get potions, you know, and you can get money. Now, you can't actually spend the money. Everyone is, a, is a, like a really good steward. And you put your money in the bank and you save it up. And the way the money comes in is when you beat the epic boss, the play, if there's, then the player with the most money is declared the king's champion and he wins the best. But if you lose to the epic boss, then money doesn't mean anything. You just all lose together. The epic boss is a really, really bad ruler and he drives your economy into the toilet and everyone's penniless. Uh, after you loot and advance your character, then, you, then the epic boss moves up another step and it keeps going until the game ends. Now, I said the game lasts five turns. On the fifth turn, you pretty much have to fight that epic boss. If you're really skilled, and you've played the game a lot, you might be able to beat the epic boss on the fourth turn. And uh, uh, it's also possible to take on a dungeon that's too tough and lose it, and then try again. Uh, if you, you can lose one dungeon, you still have a shot at winning. If you lose two dungeons, it's really hard. And if you lose three dungeons, you may as well rinse and repeat because you're, you're not gonna make it to the end, of the end of the campaign. So now you know. You're trying to level up fast enough to get to the epic boss. And with more, now the way the game is balanced, just so you know, is uh, the, the enemies and the bosses don't change their stats according to how many players there are. What happens is that with more players, you need to level up faster to get to that epic boss. So you gotta go to the tougher dungeons earlier to get enough loot to do it. And that's what that is for. Well, that is a dungeon boss. To make it simple, basically what you do is you pick a dungeon Players attack, enemies attack, keep cycling through that until you've won, level up, go to the next dungeon. That's what it's all about. Thank you for listening, and we're on Kickstarter now.